Francis Viscount Lovell was probably Richard III's best friend. It seems likely that the pair met at Midland Castle, where Lovell, who was a ward of the Earl of Warwick, had been sent to begin training as a knight. As a young man, he served under Richard, who at the time was the Duke of Gloucester, in the Duke's Scottish campaign. He seems to have distinguished himself and he was knighted by Richard at Berwick in 1481. While it's clear that Richard thought a lot of him, he made him his chamberlain when he assumed the throne. He bore a sort of state at Richard's coronation. He was made a knight of the Garter. And after Buckingham's failed rebellion, he was given extensive grants of confiscated land. One of Richard's problems as a king was that he had to rely on a very narrow group of supporters. Lovell was one of these, and this explains his inclusion in William Collingbourne's famous couplet, where he wrote, The cat, the rat, and Lovell our dog, ruleth all England under a hog. The cat, William Catesby, the rat, Sir Richard Ratcliffe, Lovell, Francis Lovell, incidentally his uh, crest was a white dog, ruleth all England under a hog, one of the hog, of course, the boar, Richard III. Well, when Henry Tudor landed at Milford Haven in August 1485 to begin his bid for the throne. Lovell was actually guarding the south coast for Richard, so it's not absolutely certain whether he made it to Bosworth in time to fight there, although he was initially listed in reports of the dead, so he may well have done. Well, in spring 1486, Lovell tried to foment a rebellion against the new king, Henry VII, but it got very little support and it rapidly petered out. And eventually Lovell managed to escape to Burgundy and the court of Margaret of York, the Dowager Duchess of Burgundy, who was an implacable enemy of Henry Tudor. He was joined there by John, Earl of Lincoln, who had been Richard's heir. And these two were the driving forces behind the incident known as Lambert Simnel's Rebellion, when a boy claiming to be the son of the Earl of Warwick was crowned Edward VI in Dublin and a force of German and Swiss mercenaries, Irish levies and a small number of Yorkist diehards launched an invasion of England, landing in Lancashire, only to be defeated at Stoke near Newark in June 1487. Lincoln was killed, but uh, Lovell escaped, probably by swimming his horse across the River Trent. It's not clear what happened to him after that. At some stage, he seems to have made it to Scotland, and in June 1488, James IV of Scotland gave him a safe conduct. But really, that's the last that we hear of him, except... In the early 18th century, some workmen were laying a new chimney at Minster Lovell, the old Lovell house in Oxfordshire, and they uncovered, and I quote here, the entire skeleton of a man at a table, complete with a book, paper and pen. Well, who was this man? Was there a man? And if there was a man, was it Lovell? Well, who knows? Well, it's interesting, though, that uh, writing in the 17th century, Francis Bacon recounts a story that Lovell, and I quote, lived long after in a cave or vault. So one conclusion that could be drawn from this story is that Lovell somehow made it back to Minster Lovell. Uh, somebody hid him in a room and then for whatever reason he died in that room. Maybe he suffocated or he starved or he simply died of his wounds or sickness. Who knows? Well, it's a very colourful story, um, but there are issues with this. I mean, were the workmen just making it up in the first place? And as I've questioned, if there was a person there, was it Lovell? Problems were that actually Lovell very rarely spent any time at Minster Lovell. So it's not as though there was like faithful servants there, I think, waiting to help him and hide him. And also uh, the estate there had been declared forfeit after Bosworth and it had been granted, I think, to Jasper Tudor. So that suggests actually that Minster Lovell would have been a rather risky place to hide at. But you never know, do you?